All right, if you are a parent, chances are you have heard of RSV, or respiratory syncytial virus. That's actually what it is. Yeah, so what can you do to keep your baby from getting it? Well, joining us now are Dr. Anna Zimmerman, a neonatologist, neonatologist, and Dina Rizzo, the parent of an infant with RSV. So first of all, doctor, I hope I said your title correctly. And we just want to kind of know for people who don't know, what exactly is RSV? What are the symptoms? Absolutely. So RSV is a common respiratory illness that usually most kids get infected with before they're two years of age. And it causes what we think of as a common cold, right? So runny nose, a little bit of a cough, low grade fever, but it can get more serious in some infants. Yeah, and, and Dina, this is, that was your experience with um, having your little baby. I mean, how scary it can be um, when you're seeing your child with a more serious case. It can look quite frightening, right? Absolutely. And Winnie, my daughter was a full-term healthy baby. Um, she was about 10 days old when I started to notice some not typical, uh, signs, which was a little bit of wheezing and some discolored mucus. And so I took her to the pediatrician. The pediatrician asked me right away if I had another child in the home that went to school. The answer was yes. So I, um, she asked if we can get an RSV test. And of course I agreed. Three minutes later, the RSV test came back positive and the entire mood of the room changed and I burst into tears and I did not burst into tears because of the RSV diagnosis. I was crying because I had no idea what RSV was. I had never heard of it. It was so scary and I felt so helpless. So Dina, talk a little bit about what you had to do. Did you have to take the baby to the hospital or were you able to kind of treat her at home? What did you have to do? So I was able to treat her at home. And the reason I was able to do that was because I had a night nurse um, because I wanted to, I had another child at home. So I, I wanted to keep that separation. And I also was looking for some um, sleep training advice. And as it turned out, the night nurse and I literally took turns uh, giving my daughter, Winnie, uh, steam showers, uh, sucking the mucus out of her nose, watching her breathe. We watched her breathe for 24 hours a day for two weeks to make sure that we didn't have to take her into the hospital. Yeah. I mean, it can be so It scary. was the worst two weeks of my life. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, Winnie, little Winnie's okay. But Dr. Zimmerman, this is something that you really want parents to know so you don't feel like Dina did. Of like, I've never even heard of this. Um, we're moving into a season where you're expecting more cases of this. What do you want moms and dads listening right now to know? So I really want them to know kind of two things. The first is uh, how to get information about this. So rallyagainstrsv.com is out there during RSV Awareness Month. Um, you can talk to your healthcare provider so that you just have a basis and some knowledge to be able to advocate for your kids. And then the second thing is, how can you protect your kids? Um, and since RSV is spread through droplets, really, it's going to be limiting your exposure to those droplets. So really good hand washing, wiping down surfaces and disinfecting them, not sharing utensils. I think parents need to feel empowered to be able to tell visitors, hey, you know what? I know you say you just have a little bit of a runny nose from allergies. Would you mind coming to meet my baby in a couple of weeks when all of your symptoms have cleared up, mm. right? That is should be an okay thing for all of our parents to say. Yeah. And then finally, a practical tip for those with toddlers, put a changing station, a clothes changing station at your back door, wherever your child comes home from daycare or play dates. That way they can take their clothes off and wipe down before they come in and give snuggles to their little brother or sister. Yeah. Because it's not just droplets on your hands, it's also droplets that they get yeah. on their clothes and then they hold the baby and now the baby is directly exposed. Dr. Zimmerman, Dina, we're out of time, but some great advice. Thank you so much. Everyone stay healthy and safe. We'll be back here tomorrow. Thanks, Melissa. Good to see you. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Watch us live wherever you are, on our mobile, on our streaming news app. And you can also watch us on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV.